Should we start bracing for a government shutdown in a couple of weeks? No. I, in fact, uh, I know that the uh, House and Senate uh, uh, negotiators, appropriations uh, uh, subcommittee chairs, have been working on all the bills, uh, trying to reach agreement. I know that one of them they were trying to close out today. There may be several others they were trying to close out today. But they'll do that over mm -hmm. the next uh, week or so. And when we come back, the key is going to be what are the packages that are put on the floor uh, and, you know, what, what's going to drive the, uh, the votes that will that'll get them across the line. But we should be, uh, we should be there before the first deadline of uh, March 1st. And then, of course, we've got the second deadline, which is March 8th. So, Congressman, the understanding we should have then is that avoiding a shutdown will happen by passing multiple appropriations bills in just a few short days, not by doing another stopgap measure. Right. The, uh, you're not going to get another uh, continuing resolution out of our conference in, in Congress. Uh, the last one was uh, was difficult. That was done because our speaker uh, recognized that there just wasn't enough physical time to process all the bills once the uh, the House and the Senate had agreed on the top line number. So uh, this time you're going to have to get these things passed. And they're talking about you won't have time to do 12 individual bills. Uh, they're talking about doing them in something called mini buses, maybe three or four, where you put three or four bills in each one uh, and pass them as a group. So you get these minibus bills passed. In a perfect world, the president stops by and delivers the State of the Union that night. And you still have a couple of major issues to deal with, Congressman, including the matter of foreign aid. The Senate sent you a bill that the speaker says is DOA. And I know that you're working on what some in Washington are calling a Plan D for dog. What's that going to look like? And can you pass it? Well, Joe, I think people forget that we passed an Israel bill back in uh, back in uh, uh, October. Uh, they've already got a, a bill over there that came from the House on the stuff that they sent over. Uh, remember, this uh, was going to include border security. Uh, once they could not perform on the border security side of it, uh, then they sent over a bill that had everything in it uh, that will not, uh, It's you can't pass it on the floor. You'll have to break it up. You'll have to downsize it. Uh, Ukraine is a great example. Uh, you don't need $60 billion. You can take the humanitarian aid and the, uh, and the government supports. Make that the responsibility of the EU who just committed 10 billion euro over the next 10 years. There's a way to do this, but uh, not the way the Senate is sent it over. Okay, but what would yours look like? Is there a plan D that's about to emerge? Well, look, bottom line is you've got a White House and a Senate that are apparently used to working with a Nancy Pelosi controlled House. Uh, you've got a new majority in the House. You have to talk yeah. to the Republicans and you have to work with the Republicans. So I would say that uh, when it comes to the border security issue, uh, let's see if we can uh, figure out how to get that done. Because Americans, uh, you know, 80 percent of Americans want the border sealed and, and they're not doing it. Well, you correctly point out, Congressman, that this is no longer a Nancy Pelosi controlled house. It's no longer a Kevin McCarthy controlled house. It is a Mike Johnson controlled house as speaker. And yet in recent weeks, we have seen a FISA, an extension of Section 702 pulled twice, as Joe already mentioned, the failure of the Israel vote and the first impeachment of Mayorkas attempt last week, a rule for assault cap raise went down last night with 18 Republican votes as well. Just what exactly is happening in a Mike Johnson controlled house right now? Well, let's first go back to the Israel bill that now Joe and you have both said that it failed. Let's explain why it failed. It failed because 80 percent of Democrats voted against Israel aid and I would argue in favor of the terrorists. That's not a, 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 a the right outcome. Uh, they're the ones who took down the Israel aid bill. And uh, when you talk about what we're doing, that's just a people process. People have uh, differences uh, of uh, differences of opinion on policy, which is the salt issue that you're talking about. And then when you talk about Mayorkas, everybody knows that uh, that was a, that was a great play by the Democrats. Uh, they actually brought someone in from the hospital to cast his vote. Good for them. Uh, we just had to delay it a few days and have all our people there and it got passed. In both of these cases, though, Congressman, as majority whip, did you know in advance that they were going to fail when you brought them to the floor? 
Well, no, you could never say that. But we did know that there is a possibility that the person that they said was not going to be there all week. I mean, you know, I, yeah. ha- I hate to admit it, but I might have done that to you, too, Joe. I might have told you that, no, they're not going to be around and then brought somebody in at the last minute. The speaker was well aware of that. He made a decision to go forward, which I think was the right decision. I support it uh, so that he could get a vote and see where everybody was. Uh, and then we were ready for uh, Tuesday. And as you saw, it passed on Tuesday. Well, and then there was Israel that failed right after that. But I know we've, we've discussed that point in particular. As we think about, though, the leadership of Mike Johnson, there has been much talk, Congressman, of potential threats to his speaker's gavel. The idea that any given member could bring a motion to vacate should he put something that they do not like on the floor. How great of a risk do you think the speaker is in right now? Kaylee, I think everybody likes to talk about this, whether they're in your side of the business or they're here on the Hill. Bottom line is we've been down that road. I don't see that happening again. It's time to continue the process. Make sure that the White House starts talking to the new speaker, which uh, the president uh, is is so far refusing to even entertain him uh, for a meeting. So, again, I said uh, earlier, I think the White House and the Senate are used to having a Pelosi-controlled House. Uh, they got a Mike Johnson-led House now, and they need to recognize that. And let's talk with each other and resolve these major issues that Americans are counting on us to get done. You know what else we love to talk about, Congressman, and I bet you know where I'm going, is a discharge petition. These are the things that many journalists and politicians like to fantasize about but never happen because they would obviously come with high drama. But in this case, there seems to be a real conversation about it when it comes to the foreign aid bill. And I wonder, with all the consternation uh, surrounding this, if you do support funding for Israel, for Ukraine, would you support a, a discharge if it actually brought it to the floor? Absolutely not. That's the wrong way to do it. And and I love everybody talking about it uh, because in reality, it's a very unlikely scenario. I, people like to talk about it, Joe, and say, well, you only need a few Republicans, but that's assuming that you have every Democrat. Right. And believe me, you've got Democrats that do not want to support Israel. You saw 166 of them last week. So the idea that uh, you're going to get uh, everything you want on Ukraine uh, and you're uh, not going to do Israel is uh, outrageous. So I think uh, if you talk in that, that theory, first, uh, Republicans aren't going to go that route. I'm confident of that. And second, you're not going to get all the Democrats to support it. Well, you say that there are some Democrats who would not like to support a measure related to Israel. It also seems clear that there's at least one Republican who would prefer not to see a measure supported on a border deal. As he made very clear, former President Donald Trump has been putting his thumb on the scale, if you will. To what extent do you think he is contributing to the chaotic nature we have seen in the House? Well, first, uh, if you're talking about... uh uh, border stuff, which uh, I think that's what you're referring to. Uh, the uh, President Trump's been talking about that long before anybody else was. It was the uh, centerpiece of his 2016. Sure, but he specifically uh, uh, said uh, the House should win. not be passing this legislation. Yeah, well, look. He is entitled. He's on the campaign trail. He's seen it. We should not have passed that border bill. Uh, Think about it. The House sent over a border bill last May that has reform to uh, finish the wall, reform to parole, reform asylum. Uh, It ends catch and release, and it restores remain in Mexico, which, by the way, our Border Patrol has said would staunch the flow by 70 percent overnight. What did the Senate produce? The product they produced did not do anything to finish the wall, didn't reform parole, didn't reform asylum, didn't restore remain in Mexico, and instead codified the illegal uh, release of uh, of, uh, immigrants into our country that uh, Secretary Mayorkas has been doing, uh, subverting the law. So that is a non-starter for everyone. And again, Democrats have got to start talking to the House. The House is a Republican House. We're ready and willing to work to solve these problems that the American people expect solutions to. Uh, but you got to work together. Well, obviously, uh, there are a lot of issues to work out here, uh, Congressman, and a lot of things could happen in the next year. You've already run for speaker once. If you had the opportunity to represent the Republican conference in this House of Rep- uh, Representatives, would you do it again? 
hey, I'm, I'm doing the best job I can as the whip. I support Mike Johnson. He's our speaker. Uh, he's going to remain our speaker, and we're going to stay in the majority, believe it or not. I'm very bullish on the election. Uh, Republicans will win in November, and when we do, uh, Mike Johnson will still be our speaker.